Hey everybody, welcome back. We have a new software update, version 11.4.7.2 of full self-driving beta. First of all, I wanna give a huge shout out to my new Patreon subscribers. Mahout has joined the lumbar tier and Eric has joined the premium connectivity tier. Thank you so, so much. You have no idea how much it means to me. Through Patreon, you get customized shout outs like this in my videos. You also get prioritized chat, insider tips, and in the case of Mahout in the lumbar tier, you get direct messaging with me. I really appreciate it. If you're interested in supporting me through Patreon, check out the link in the description. There is a lot of new stuff here as far as the visualizations and the screen goes. However, I don't think there are any new updates to the actual self-driving piece. I have the screen pulled up right now. This is a brand new display that I've seen with data sharing. I have no idea what this is saying. Basically, I think stuff that I've, well, actually, I've not seen this before, include data when parked. Wow, I'm gonna have to go through this again in the future. It looks like you can ask each drive. I'm just gonna close out of it and hopefully it'll come back another another drive. One thing that I did notice is that there's a little blue icon in the bottom left that indicates that there's some sort of update there. I really like that, that kind of tells you where to go. So if I tap on that, it says the display, there's something new there. So let me just scroll down and see if there's a blue dot next to where it, the new area is. It does not look like there is a blue dot, but I do see the scroll wheel function. So now on the left scroll wheel, you can program this to have different things. Fan speed, wiper speed, this stuff is all really, really nice. And the camera, the save the dash cam, that's really nice. And to be able to pull up the camera as well, let's just set that real quick and do a quick test. A long press for quick access. Let's just do that, a long press. Oh, well, there it is, the camera. Okay, so then you can open and close it there. Okay, that's kind of nice. Uh, menu, let's see if I press it again. Okay, so I have to hold it down. It looks like it comes up. Again, none of this is new for people that have been using this for a while. Long press again, maybe that goes makes it go away. Yeah, that's kind of nice. So I'll have to play around with that. And uh, the other things that I noticed is when I put it into drive, listen, you'll hear a nice sound. And uh, the same thing when I go in reverse. It's really subtle, but I do like that. Other things I've noticed really quick is that the lights get displayed on the screen. So that was not really visualized before. So let me make this full screen. You can see there's lights being shown. As subtle as that is, that was not there before. Also, what I noticed is that the, the font up in the upper left is different. So the D symbol is a little bit more bold and the zero mile per hour, that's a little bit more bold. So really subtle things, and there's a whole wide range of other things that I did notice very briefly. That if, if I go into the battery here, you can see this chart, it's a, a lot different looking. So these things are all nice, but again, nothing with the self-driving, and that's what today's video is all about. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna try to force full self-driving beta through a road closed area, and we're gonna see if it can actually go around it intelligently. I know to, as of today, beta cannot detect when a road is closed. In other words, it, it can't read the sign. Now, sometimes the GPS will, will relocate you automatically. I'm gonna try to force it to go through this area and we're gonna see what happens. So I am going to drive up to the area where I know that we can test this and I'm gonna put it in self-driving mode to be able to do that, so bear with me here. You can see here, it says 1.5 miles. And if I tap on the 1.5 miles, you can see now when the place closes. This is all really nice. This wasn't there before. You get some nice pictures. That is really cool. So me being new to this, this is obviously a big update for me. And I, I don't know how long the, the, the other people that have not have, had beta, I don't know how long they've had access to this stuff. But it's really nice. I mean, you can make a phone call right here. You can go to the web page. Now, you do need to have the premium connectivity to be able to access the web page while you're driving around. Otherwise, you'd have to have your hotspot turned on from your phone, or you'd have to be parked in an area where you have Wi-Fi. So I'm going to cancel all that. Well, actually, let's let's go ahead and navigate to Sawal Health Foods. And this is exactly where we're going. And you can see right up here, this white's road going to the right, that's what's closed. So I'm going to head up in that area and then try to force it down that road. So to get to this first air, first destination, I'm just going to have it do its thing and 
This should be a perfect drive. It's a pretty simple one. <laughs> there's nothing complicated about this. If it screws up, ooh, look at that, there's a person coming. I didn't even know they were there until they showed up on the screen. Maybe a bicyclist? Let's see, nope, okay, no bicyclist. I don't know why it said that there was a, a cyclist. It, was, it just showed up very briefly. Kind of interesting to see that show up. So uh, th like I said, there should be no problems with this drive. And if there are, I will be shocked. So let's go ahead and get started. It is awfully dark for being 5.30 p.m. It is going to rain here coming up, so I'm trying to beat the rain by coming out here. It's slowing down for these cars, I think. It probably suspected that they were gonna pull out in front of me. It was, uh, you know, a little bit abrupt for me. I wasn't expecting that. There is somebody, or there was somebody behind us. They just turned. But uh, had they been any closer, I probably would have had to step on the accelerator. We do have some geese up in the road here and there's a car waiting for the geese to cross. Let's see if my car goes around the geese. This is gonna be interesting. So they're in the road. Okay, now they're coming across. There's a person fishing there on the rail. Okay, they did show up. And, oh, it's actually a turkey. So they are getting out of the road, so my car doesn't need to worry about them. And it just went flying through there. <laughs> that other car was waiting so patiently. And yeah, it's getting really dark outside right now up here to this light and turn left oh there was a beaver over there on the side that's i don't see that very often you know you see a lot of deer in this area turkey every so often but definitely deer are very common in this wooded area well you can see this truck here showing up as kind of a compact okay now it turned into a car so it does it's not sure what to make oh that car was really loud wow it's not sure what to make of this truck and trailer it keeps changing <laughs> its shape in front of us that's a transformer all right that is hilarious somebody had asked previously they had noticed the little neck pillow behind me in my car okay come on and i have that there because there are issues with the seats with the Model 3, and I'm not sure if it's an issue with the Model Y as well, but some people, the oil in their hair or the, the, the maybe, maybe the product that they use, like the hairspray, or I don't know what causes it, but the, the seat cushions in the Model 3 have been known to bubble up, and mine is a 2019 car. I'm not sure if it happens in the, in the newer models, but definitely in a lot of the groups that I'm in for Tesla Model 3s, I saw this issue in 2019 popping up all over the place. So I was like, I don't want that happening with my car. So I was quick to get something to put back there. I really probably could have some sort of, um, you know, cover that I could wrap around there, but I just got this cushion and my head hardly ever touches it. But it's funny because when I see it in my own videos, I think it, it's just kind of one of those things that like an old person would have in their car. <laughs> okay, from here, what I'm going to do is force it. So I'm going to end trip completely. And what I'm going to do is dial in the destination manually. So I'll, I'll go ahead and put the pin right there and we'll tell it to go there. Let's see if it, yes. Okay, oh no. So the GPS is automatically routing me around the construction. I'm gonna cancel that and try to force it to go right through there. Let's see if I do this. Let's see what happens. Okay, we'll, we'll set that. Oh, it's still, so it's intelligent enough to know that we can't go there right now. That is interesting. Let's try it one more time. I will put it as right here. Really trying to get it to go through there. Nope, it won't go through there at all. Let's try this, okay? What you can do is if you have no destination, it will just continue to go straight. So I'm gonna end trip, I'm gonna get out on this road and I am going to just turn it on. And we're gonna see where it goes. It should, it always tries to go straight. If it can't go straight, it will default to going right. So let's see what happens. 
All right, here we go. Turn it on. Okay, there are some cars coming up behind me. And we are in this. So th there's two lanes right now. It says go left or go right. And there's a turn arrow on the road. My car is probably going to try to go right. Or I mean straight. And it is. And I'm going to take over because somebody's right behind me. So I'm going to try that. That was interesting. That was a really cool test. But unfortunately, there were people right behind me. I really want to catch a situation where there's nobody there to really see what it will do. Because I, we all know that it cannot read the road closed signs today. Yeah, it's, it's trying to go right there and it really can't figure it out. So it was gonna stall out and do exactly what I thought it was gonna do, which is basically stop going forward. Uh, it, w it didn't turn on the right turn signal. The, the tentacle wasn't indicating that it was gonna go right at all. That is a fail and it's exactly what I suspected. So I, I don't think there are any changes here. It did mention when the updates came in, it did say that there were some basic like software updates, some release notes. If I go in here real quick, you'll see it says minor updates. And again, Tesla never tells you exactly what they updated. So uh, we really, it's a mystery. My modified screen has a little bit of an issue with electrical noise when the windshield wipers go. This is why I don't do any filming with full self-driving beta in the rain. Because what happens is when the windshield wipers go, it interferes with the HDMI signal and it actually corrupts the, the display. And if it happens here, which it probably will. Okay, we need to go left. Okay, good. Going awfully fast here. Uh, if, if, it, uh, if the windshield wipers go, we're going to lose our HDMI screen. I'm surprised they haven't gone already. There they go. And there goes the screen. All right, guys. Uh, that concludes today's drive. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I've got a couple exciting ones coming up. I'm showing a right turn at an intersection where there's quite a few problems. It's still merging when you turn right. It, it, it remains a big issue with full self-driving. Uh, one, one of the complaints that I have out of, out of many. And then the other one is a really cool Uber drive where I take this girl from a golf course down into the city of Chicago. It was a really awesome drive. It did all things considered, it did really well. I did have to take over toward the end just to make it comfortable and not too awkward for the passenger. And that tends to be a regular pattern in tricky situations. And you, as a beta tester, have to have at least a year of experience to know when to take over. Obviously, if you're all by yourself and you're okay with some discomfort, uh, then you can kind of put it to the test or experiment a little bit more. But when you have passengers in your car, it's just, just not the right thing to do. And also, you, you always have to be careful of other people around you. And I think if you're new to testing, you're already going to be cautious enough to kind of take over or disengage whenever you need to. But some people are like, oh, no, this should work. You know, that even though it's beta, I paid for this. I've seen other videos, and some videos are very deceiving. They make it seem like the software is perfect. And it really is not. So be careful, I would say, if you're new to using full self-driving beta, definitely take caution. Be ready to take over. And don't hesitate Don't hesitate to take over. Uh, when I first started testing, I was like, ooh, if I, if I take over, then it's not good because feedback's not going to go to Tesla. And it, in fact, it's the other way around. The more that you take over, the more that you step on the accelerator, the more that data gets back to Tesla. That is feedback for them. So don't hesitate. And please be cognizant of the people behind you because it can do the worst things at the worst possible times. And I've said that many, many times. If you made it this far in the video, thanks so much again for watching. Really appreciate all of you. And I will see you guys in the next video.